All right. Hello to everybody who has joined thus far. If anyone else joins, then they can pick up wherever we are. The session will be recorded and posted on the Wellspring YouTube, as well as sent in an email to everyone. So if anyone wasn't able to attend or misses part of the presentation, you can always get the information that way. We are so excited to have Anna from Millersville with us here tonight to learn a little bit more about Millersville. She is going to do a brief presentation on Millersville and everything that it has to offer. And then we will do a Q&A session. So during the presentation, feel free to write anything in until the Q&A feature in Zoom. Uh, at the end of the presentation, I will let everyone into the room so you'll be able to unmute and ask your questions that way once we get through the presentation. So with that, I'll hand it over to Twee to introduce herself before we get started. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Anna, to uh, present this presentation for us. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Twee. I'm in charge for Vietnam market and uh, other some Southeast Asia country. So after the webinar, if you have any questions, please just contact me. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Tai. Uh, hi, guys. My name is Xin, and I'm based in Beijing. I'm responsible for uh, mainland China, including in, uh, Hong Kong and uh, Hong Kong and Macau. So uh, I also have uh, my colleagues based in um, also in Shanghai and Guangzhou, and in Hangzhou. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us, and we are happy more than to help. So yeah, and thank you, Anna, for today's presentation. Yeah. So passing back to Anna. All right, thank you everyone for having me tonight. Let me share my screen. Perfect. Oh, there we go. So my name is Anna Bradford. I'm the Associate Director of International Admissions here at Millersville University, uh, affectionately known as the Ville to students, faculty and staff. And today I'm looking forward to introducing you to my institution. First, I'm going to start off by talking about the location that Millersville University resides in. Then I'll talk to you about the programs and offerings here at Millersville offered by our campus. Then I'll talk about our admissions criteria and I'll follow up and end by pulling up the university website and helping you navigate to certain portions of the university website dedicated to international admissions, as there are four different admitting offices and the Office of International Admissions does handle all admissions levels, the undergraduate, graduate, non-degree, as well as um, potential, like the English Language Institute. So we are the one-stop shop for anything you would need to do admissions related with the institution. And today I'll be covering all of that information. So first, I wanna start by talking about Millersville University's location. We are in the east coast of the continental United States. You can see here in the circle highlighted that we are in the state of Pennsylvania, and we are in a great location that gives easy access to the Eastern seaboard right along that beltway. So we have quick access within about two and a half hours to New York City, about an hour and 15 minutes to Washington, Two and a, sorry guys, it's 10 p.m. Um, two and a half hours to Washington D.C. and an hour and 15 minutes to Philadelphia. We are accessible by train to both New York and Philly, and you can go to Washington D.C. by train by going through Philadelphia. We're actually closer to New York City than we are to Pittsburgh, another city within our state, largely because there's a huge mountain chain right between our city and the other. So it's a great location a lot of businesses, a lot of things to experience for those students in this region. And we are a historic and beautiful location. Um, this is a picture of Lancaster City that is about 10 minutes by car, so maybe about a kilometer, a kilometer and a half from the heart of Millersville campus. It's quite a beautiful historic area. And you can see the silhouette here on the slide that we're actually famous for the Amish, we're the home of the original and the oldest Amish population in the country. If you've never heard of them, they are a group of people that choose to live a uh, traditional lifestyle. So they still use horses and buggies for transportation, plowing their fields. 
So it's kind of fun to be driving to the store and either seeing a horse and buggy parked there or going through the intersection. So that just adds to some of the charm. And we are in a historic region. We were actually the capital of the United States for one day during the Revolutionary War, um, as we're one of the oldest inland city in the United States um, established after the country. So very happy to be able to have students participate in that historical charm and exploration of our country. But we are also a hub of activity. So we are a growing city. We're the fastest growing city in the state of Pennsylvania. So there are a lot of people that have relocated to the area because it's an affordable and safe place to live, but also there's a lot of new arts. So they're um, just about a block away from this picture. Um, there is a pottery shop where you can paint your pottery um, while you have it kilned and you're eating something. There's a bead shop. There's a whole bunch of arts in the area. This picture right here you can see is our central market. And it is a really great farmer's market for students to be able to explore and experience while they're here on campus. So it's definitely an area our students like to go to explore. They don't always go down to the major cities because there's a lot within our region. And we're a very hospitable region. Lancaster City is one of only 18 welcoming cities in the whole United States. It's a very difficult certification to get because your local government, um, nonprofits, as well as businesses need to come together and declare that they will be a welcoming and accessible city for all of those that have to be forcibly relocated to the United States. So you can imagine that it sets a great atmosphere for our students to be able to study. And we really benefit through that regional diversity, not only through the foods we get offer, you can see here a sign of the food tours. So there's foods from all over the world. Um, these two families highlighted are actually two families that had to relocate to the area that were able to expand and um, bring their diversity of taste and cultural foods to our community. There are many houses of worship. There are 13 international grocery stores. Um, food options from around the world, as well as our local cuisine um, from the immigrants that have come here historically at the starting of the country. So there's a lot for students to be able to experience. So now that I've talked with you a little bit about our region, I'm going to transition to talking about our campus, starting with a welcome from our president, Dr. Wuba. And Dr. Wuba came to the United States as an international student himself. He actually came um, from Ghana, for his master's degree and stayed now is leading an institution here. He is also the chief of his tribe. He's a king of his tribe here, or if, sorry, a king of his tribe in Ghana. So he actually is part of the chief tribal council and he's still actively involved in the politics of his home nation. So think about December, he actually had a delegation from Ghana come to the campus to talk about trade options and internationalization. So we really have an international thrust and motive from the very top of the infrastructure of our campus all the way through. So internationalization and welcomeness is really at the heart of our campus. Millersville was established in 1855 as a teacher's college. And since then we've expanded our offerings greatly, but have still retained the heart of a teacher's college, really focused on making sure that students are first and that students are learning through everything that we do. It's something that remains strong and part of our identity. And we're very proud of the distinctions that Millersville University has been able to obtain. Here, you can see some of the logos of different um, awards and recognitions that we have been given. We're consistently recognized by the US News and World Report as the top 30 universities in the North. The state of Pennsylvania actually has the most higher education institutions in the country. So it's a very highly um, competitive award for us to be able to get. And there's a few other distinctions that I love to talk about here. One of them is the Insight into Diversity Award. Um, with over 3,500 institutions in the US, us being one of only 147 institutions recognized, for 11 years for our commitment to diversity and equity is very powerful. And it's not just something we recently had, but a very proven track record over a decade. It's who we are and what we're committed to. And that's also demonstrated by a recognition from the Times Higher Education 
impact rankings, the very first sustainable development rankings, we were one of only about 46 institutions from the United States recognized out of a list of under 300 globally. So we're proud of that as well. Millersville University really lives out the ideals that we speak to our students. Here you can see some of the numbers um, that give you a picture of the size and scope of our campus. We're a mid-sized institution, large enough for students to have a lot of options with over 100 programs and over 170 student clubs and organizations, but small enough for students really to have that um, time with a professor and smaller class sizes. So we don't have really large lecture halls. Students are going to be able to ask questions, participate, learn from their professors, and it won't be such an intimidating environment for students that might not have interacted with professors in that way before. So listed here on the slide are um, the most popular or some of the most popular programs for current international students on campus. You can see a listing of our undergraduate programs as well as the graduate ones. We have many more offerings than this, um, over a hundred different options. Students at the undergraduate level can have more than one major so they can comfortably double major or have one major with one or two minors. And all of our offerings are organized within four academic colleges. We're very proud of our Lombardo College of Business that was newly launched and is growing. For example, we have a cybersecurity program that is being launched through them. So there's a lot of exciting things happening on campus and new programs you can see coming from the college, like the Lombardo College of Business moving forward. And there's a lot of academic resources available for our students to participate in. And um, we have the Together Strong Network. This is an advocacy and open forum for students and faculty to be able to advocate for growth and change on campus. And um, actually I need to rename it on this slide, but our Student Success Network was actually, it's grown. So it's now launched into its own college. It's called University College. So if you were to look on that on our website, you'll see that there. There's other student support services as well. Our experiential learning and career management um, department, that's our career services department. They're responsible for internships, experiential learning, as well as inviting employers and alumni back to campus to really help students prepare for the career, um, for their careers after they graduate in the workforce. And we're very proud of our 96% placement rate six months out of university, either for higher education and jobs. So we're very proud of our track record of success for our alumni. And one of the ways that we prepare our, alum our students for success is through our annual conference. Uh, this conference is actually happening next week. It is made in Millersville. It's a homegrown conference we have here on campus. Students of every discipline can really cut their teeth and get experience on research. And this is a place for students to be able to work with faculty. Um, there are funding opportunities to explore their own research and they can participate at any level. So they don't have to wait until they're upperclassmen. And they present that research here on campus. Um, it's also available online. So if you wanted to log in next week, you'll be able to see student research online. And then they also have a journal, the Made in Millersville Journal, where students compete and they can be selected for publication. And some very industrious students would be able to take that publication and cycle that out for further publication, really diversifying and growing their resume. A lot of students have found through this experience that they love research, you know, some of them not so much, but it's definitely been a great career defining moment for a lot of our students. We have a lot of amazing traditions here on the Millersville campus. A number of them are related to our weeks of welcome. So welcoming back returning and new students every fall. We have about four to five weeks of different events, lots of things happening throughout the start of the term. And some of those are traditions such as the candle lighting ceremony that's part of our Marauder Pride celebration. So you can see here pictures of the, pic the top picture of students, new students holding candles that were given in to them by current students and alumni. And it's part of that welcoming tradition to let them know that they're part of this chain of tradition that goes back all the way to 1855. Um, also during homecoming, we have a parade that goes all the way through Millersville Bro. And our international students participate every year by carrying their nation's flags through the town and representing their countries in that way. So it's always something our students love to participate in. 
Uh, we have our week or celebration of international education. I'm excited for that at the end of this month, like so celebrating students that have studied overseas during the term or are graduating international students, as well as final stretch. That's at the end of the semester. There's a series of events that the campus puts on to really push students towards um, getting through their finals, as well as relieving stress from the year. So those traditions are actually a great reflection of the really um, well-developed student life resources we have here in campus. There are a number of departments and places that students can go for assistance. Um, one that I like to highlight here is our living learning communities. There are a number of communities that are related to identity groups or interests. For example, our women in STEM um, live and learn community. And we also have a global connections live and learn community. Um, those are housing options, and I'll explore housing options in another slide or two, but there are a lot of clubs and opportunities for students to engage and have a great experience here on campus. And our Office of International Programs and Services really is that one-stop shop for everything. My office is located within IPS, so from the very beginning, all the way to staying in touch with them while they're alumni, our office serves as the first point of contact, being able to connect them with other resources on campus throughout their time here. So we're very happy to be able to get to know our students through that consistency. And here are a few pictures of the different types of events we were able to have with our students this last year. For example, a picture of them going to Philadelphia, DC, we're actually taking students to DC within the next week. Um, so a lot of great opportunities for them to explore with us cheaply, um, and then also set that tone for them to explore later on their own if they want. So here are some pictures of housing options here on campus. Um, that very top photo is a picture of what one of the residence halls would look like. The traditional or the most common model of our, we have about six to seven different residence halls available. Um, the most common model of the room would be the shared suite. So it'd be two rooms with two students to each room. And there would be two bathrooms within a shared common area outside of those rooms with actually the sinks to those bathrooms outside of that. So it's very convenient. Um, as you can see from this picture, it's kind of a spacious room. And then there are a really great location on campus, um, that Student Memorial Center picture um, that is at the heart of our campus. And that would be the location for dining, the bookstore, and it's actually right in front of where housing is. So it's very central, great location for students to be able to go relax and study. Um, there is a requirement for undergraduate students with less than 60 credit hours. So less than two years of academic study to live on campus, unless they have a family member or a sponsor that's related within about a 40 mile radius. So we do have students live here on campus and it's a great experience for them. Um, and a slide or two will have an estimate of costs and the estimate of costs does include um, the cost of housing. Um, so I'm not gonna play this video right now, um, but this is an example of Yasser. He's one of our students is about to graduate. He's been here on campus for quite some time. He did his bachelor's degree here with Millersville and stayed to do his master's in technology and innovation. And he's gotten quite involved. There's a lot of opportunities for students. For example, he was involved in intramurals, Greek life. He's volunteered and he's actually a graduate assistant here at um, our office. So there's a, he's a great um, example of how a student can really get involved, thrive and flourish here on campus. And here's a few more testimonials of graduates from Millersville University. Um, here from India, he was here for economics and he was part of the launching of our Marauder Fund. This is a club where students really get to cut their teeth on investment banking. Um, they've done so well that they actually have purchased a Bloomberg terminal, which is a very sophisticated piece of equipment that's being used on Wall Street right now. And through those experiences, he was able to launch into his uh, master's program. And then now he actually is working um, at a hedge fund within the um, world of Wall Street. So he was able to take those experiences and really put them into practice. 
and Young Yu, she came and she was doing her undergraduate degree in chemistry and went straight into a PhD degree from her bachelor's. And she's very excited to be pursuing that at her dream school on the West Coast. So we've really set up our students for success. Millersville University is a university very committed to epic values, and we spell epic this way on purpose to be able to squeeze in all of those values. Everything we do on campus really comes back to one of these six core principles. And as you're explaining to a student the kind of campus and environment that they can enjoy here, this would be how we would typify that. And we actually, every um, as we have graduating students coming through that celebration of international education, we really have students speak to these different ideals as well. So if they're wanting to know what campus is like, and this is something that's interested to them, will be a great home for them. Now I'll transition to talking about the uh, mission criteria here at Millersville. There is no application fee, and that would be for any level. So whether it's undergraduate, English Language Institute or graduate, that fee is not required and there is no code required to be able to obtain that waiver. At the undergraduate first year level, um, all that's needed or at the undergraduate transfer level as well would be their transcripts. And we can use unofficial copies of students' transcripts to be able to issue a decision. We would need official copies at the time um, of enrollment. So we would there's going to be a hold placed on their account until we have those official copies made available. We do need transcripts in the official native language as well as a translation of that. So we do need to have both of those in order to perform our in-house credential evaluation. And we also do require a demonstration of English language proficiency. We do have an intensive English language program or English language institute. So there is a possibility of conditional admission um, students can indicate that they would like to be considered for conditional admission during the application process, yeah. or there is also a form that they'd be able to petition that requirement. Um, there are four different criteria for us to consider waiving of the English proficiency requirement. So it would be the, the institution, for example, maybe they're at an American institution in your home in your country that has US regional accreditation, or they attended their education in another country where English was the main language of instruction that would be automatically waived based off of that information. Um, there are about 12 different English language exams that we do accept. Uh, if they've taken IB or potentially A-levels or O-levels curriculum, we would waive that. If they are not yet graduated from that curriculum, the petition for waiver would come down to the English language um, class, what the grade is in that class. So there's several different ways in which we can address and meet the English language requirements. Uh, for students that are borderline, our cutoff GPA for admission at the first year level is a 2.5 GPA. But if they're like a 2.45, 2.47, um, we would ask for additional materials, for example, uh, reference from their teacher and a statement of about 300 words um, describing their goals for university and college life. And that information we'd use holistically to be able to see if we could meet the needs of that applicant um, here at the institution with our student support services. Um, for other, um, and that would really be where supplemental materials such as that uh, co-curriculars or engagement would become important as well. Materials that would be needed to issue a student NI-20 would be the copy of the passport, uh, the source of funds form, and the proof of funds documentation. When an application is submitted, those three items will automatically pop up on the checklist. They're not required for us to read the application, but we do provide students the opportunity to give those to us at the time of application submission. For graduate programs, um, the, pro the requirements are going to vary depending on the program that they are looking to pursue. Something to keep in mind is there is about half of our graduate programs that have kind of shifted online due to the demand of the domestic market. So for example, the one STEM certified graduate program that we have to offer is our master's in um, technology and innovation, but we do have a lot of other programs Programs that are very popular with our international students would be actually our master's in clinical psychology, um, school psychology. So there are some other really tangible, great options. 
for our master's students. Um, the cutoff GPA for most of our graduate programs would be a 2.75, but it can vary depending on the program. For example, our master's of sports uh, management, their cutoff GPA is a 2.8, and the clinical psychology program is going to have a cutoff GPA of a 3.0. So it will vary based off of the program that they're applying for. Some programs are going to ask for reference letters, goal statements, um, irregardless of which program it is, if they are asking for a goal statement, please have students upload that complete um, formatted goal statement as a PDF to their portal. Um, the faculty do care greatly about the formatting of those goal statements. And just like the undergraduate, we do accept unofficial copies of transcripts to be able to give a decision, but we will require official copies for enrollment purposes. Um, similarly, same English language criteria found on the website um, for this level. And we do in-house credential evaluations at this time for these students. Um, the GMAT, GRE, or the MAT, the Miller's Analogy Test might be required um, for certain programs, for example, the Masters of Innovation and Technology if they have below a 3.0 GPA. So that will be on a case-by-case -case basis. So now moving forward to talking about the costs of attendance. Right here, these are the estimated costs based off of this year's tuition. There could potentially be an increase of about one to 2%, um, largely because we have not changed tuition for the last four years. And due to the environment right now, just economically, the university is looking to increase just slightly. So when you're talking with students, they might be able to anticipate maybe a few hundred dollar increase to this amount. We do not charge students on a credit model. So if they are enrolled full time, they have a band of tuition that they would be paying. Um, what you're seeing here at the undergraduate level is fit for the rate of 15 credits. So that would be five classes for two consecutive semesters per fall term and a spring term. That's where you're seeing that 19,290. Um, so the mandatory fees is all those fees for two semesters housing for two semesters at our most affordable rate, and then our meal plan. So this 34420 is not a price that our undergraduate students would be paying because they're, I'm going to be talking about our awards on the next slide. But that bottom amount, the total anticipated annual expenses, is the amount that they're going to need to meet to be able to have their I-20 issued. Um, that source of funds form that you can find on a student's checklist that they submit to be able to get their A20 will also have that financial information for them. So now talking about scholarships and aid, there are multiple awards that we're able to give our students and many of these are renewable. Our merit-based scholarships are administered by our office and they are offered starting in September, going through to May 1st. Um, after May 1st, they're offered on the basis of availability. And for students that have been issued an award between September and to May, they need to claim it by May 1st to secure that award. Um, so there's no application required, and it is based off of their grade point average that is being articulated at the time of the admission review. Um, those awards go between 3,000 to 5,000, and those are renewable if the student maintains a GPA of over a 3.0. Um, we do have honors and athletic scholarships that are facilitated by their respective departments. So our honors program will facilitate 10 $1,000 scholarships for students that look to participate in that program. And we are in NCAA Division II institutions with without about eight, about 18 different teams. So if a student is recruited by a team and a coach extends an award to them, that award, just like honors, would be renewable and stackable with our merit-based scholarships. And the other award that our office um, gives to all students, and it's not based on GPA, it's purely based on them being enrolled full-time and not being in Pennsylvania, um, so that's why I mentioned on the previous slide, all students receive some sort of award at the undergraduate level. All first year students receive a tuition discount of $6,000 that's renewable. They just need to stay enrolled full time. 
and I'll transfer students. So at Millersville, a transfer student would be a student transferring in with more than 12 credit hours of coursework. And that is $4,000, again, renewable for those students. Other options for students to be able to pay or um, lessen the financial burden of their education would be on-campus employment. Um, there are many offices here in campus, our office of international programs and services, dining hall office, actually the athletics teams, many of them employ students. And that's a great way for them to really get some relevant student experience and working. There's installment plans where students can split their payment each semester for up to five payments. They can start doing this payments before the start of the semester so that their final payment is finished at the end of the term. And it is $30 to enroll for each term that they choose to do this. And for graduate students, those master's degree seeking students, they are eligible to apply for graduate assistantships. And these would give them the opportunity to work 20 hours a week while receiving up to 24 credits per year. So those two semesters um, waiting their uh, credits. Actually something that's exciting that just happened today is the baseline for students um, for full-time at the graduate level went from nine credits to six. So it does give some students a little bit more flexibility in how they're addressing their education um, and giving them a little bit more flexibility in some of their online options as well. Um, and for our graduate students, they do receive a stipend of $5,000. Um, so this would be split each month for while they are enrolled. So here's just a summary of a lot of the reasons why students enjoy and choose Millersville University. It is a great location with lots of opportunities and a really safe and friendly region with a lot of charm. It's a really great place to live. I personally enjoy it. And I know a lot of the students have definitely enjoyed it as well. So for students that are looking to apply today and go to our website, um, there are these bright yellow buttons. Um, if they hit the apply button, they'll go right here to this page. There are four admitting offices on this campus. Um, and it's very important that all of our students are using this international application. The undergraduate, graduate, and online programs all deal with our permanent residents and domestic applicants. So we would be working with all international student applicants. We want to make sure that they would be utilizing this link in this form. Um, so now I am going to stop sharing my screen and pull up the university website. And I'm just going to show you some of the places where that information that I've shared with you today is located. So let me share that. Okay. So if you start here from the Millersville website, and you hit Ville Life, I'm sorry, admissions and go to international, you'll see a prim our primary page where you can learn more information. This navigation pane will take you to a lot of our other criteria. If you're with a student who is logging on it from their phone, this is what it would look like. It would no longer be on the side, but on the top. And if you hit this prospective students link, and have the little plus minus go down, you'll see here a listing of our undergraduate requirements that I just explained, the graduate requirements, as well as information, for example, about our English Language Institute, a CEA accredited or, um, group. Here you can see our financial assistance. So here is a summary of that reduced tuition eligibility, the reduced tuition grant of 6,000 and 4,000. You could see that information right here. And right here underneath it is the information for that merit-based scholarship I explained earlier. Our English language proficiency standards are detailed here. Um, the completion of a qualifying academic program, achieving a score on a recognized exam, completing qualifying courses, degrees, or diplomas. Um, so those three criteria you can see fully listed here as well as regions where that qualify for an automatic tuition waiver. For example, um, if you have an applicant that you're working with from Singapore, when they submit the application, that requirement is going to be automatically waived. 
under credential equivalencies, if you hit this secondary school equivalency, you'll see for different nations, the requirement if the school, the student is still in high school or the requirement if they have graduated. And then we have our admitted students checklist. So if you're working with a student who has been admitted and they're curious or confused about, about what next steps can be, we have, I think it's 13, sorry. Um, I can't remember exactly right now, 13 different steps, 12 different steps um, for what is required afterwards, as well as some information about that form here. So a lot of different opportunities, or I wanted to make sure that I talked you through what was available on the website for you to make sure that you're going to the best place for your um, information. So that is kind of a comp as comprehensive as I can summary of the admissions process and resources here at Millersville. And now I'm happy to take any questions you might have. All right, so I will give everybody the ability to talk so you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question or you can always write in to the Q&A feature as well. Uh, so Anna. Hi, Miley. Uh, thanks for the presentation. So I got a question regarding to the graduation, uh, no, the graduate, uh, no, the graduate assistantship. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, so this means that the student, they are registered to work in, uh, in the campus for 20 hours and they will get the 24 credit weights, right? So it's not automatically given to them. So if they are chosen and selected as a graduate assistant, it is automatic. So they work 20 hours a week for during the term, so they don't have to work during breaks. They're automatically awarded that tuition waiver, and then they have a stipend that's paid out by month. So all those things are automatic for the time that they are still a graduate assistant. There are some graduate assistantships that are actually 50%. So that 24 hours and that $5,000, I would just be split in half and they'd work 10 hours a week. Um, but there are a good deal of them that are the traditional full-time awards. And when students are exploring, like for example, right now is a time where professors are choosing their GAs. They can be considered for a graduate assistantship on a rolling basis throughout the year. So if they are admitted for spring term or they're admitted late for full term, they still can put in that application for the graduate assistant chip. And if they, if there are still positions open, they'll go into that life pool. Um, and it's also an area where it's beneficial for students to reach out to departments that they are interested in potentially working with to ask if they have a GA. Uh, we've had a lot of students, international students that did that, that actually were interviewed without going through the process, just because it's a little bit, Millersville cares a lot about that student and faculty interactions. So those students who take that initiative to really reach out and see what's possible, um, sometimes are able to find a position that way. But that's kind of a summary of how the graduate assistantships are functioning here on campus. Okay, thank you, got it. Hey, Anna, we have a question in the Q&A from Day in China. They're wondering if Millersville accepts graduate applications without English score for conditional admission first. They do. And so for our English Language Institute, students can actually be dual enrolled. Um, there's six different levels for English Language Institute, and at level five and six, uh, if they land in one of those, they can actually take coursework for the English Language Institute at the same time as their degree, um, depending on where their English language score is. So they can be conditionally admitted. When they arrive, they'll be tested by our department, placed in one of those levels, and then they'd be able to gauge whether they can be duly enrolled or not. So that is possible. Great. Thank you. Have we got any other questions?
If you end up having a question later on, you can always reach out to your respective Wellspring rep and they will either be able to answer it for you or be able to get in touch with Anna to answer it for you. Great, well, if we don't have any more questions, we will wrap this up. And again, thank you so much for being here with us, Anna. I know it's late for you and that was a great presentation. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. Um, to everyone that joined us for this webinar, thank you. Wellspring is super excited to be partnered with Millersville and hopefully the students love it as just, just as much as we do. Looking forward to working with all of you and looking forward to visiting you when I'm in your country. So thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, Anna. Thank you, Anna. Bye-bye. Thank you.